Okay, being on black, folks, and either we are hell of, uh, and basically it wouldn't because this is Palau, Antarctic, the South Pole, basically, and that's the moon. Okay, I've got this blown up a thousand. Now, the interesting thing is, let me show you on Solar Artist. Now, when we get this shot, folks, basically it always shows us exactly what you should normally see if you're pretty much in North America or just about anywhere in the world. This is what you'll see for a facing of the moon. And as you know, that we basically, and now remember, it's down at Antarctica, okay, the South Pole, okay, or even if you, someone could get a view or a shot of it at the North Pole, okay. Now, this is what you should more than likely see on Earth, okay, because this is our facing, okay. Now, even down there at the South Pole, you'd have a little bit different direction of a look. You'd have the whiter area down here, right? Now, I did see this a little while ago when I was at 1730 on the time clock, okay, when I was zoomed in at, at the old. So, check out the possible wild rotation of the South Pole or the moon, okay? And we all know that everybody's been noticing the idea, well, the darker area, kind of like that, and basically the dark side, ladies and gentlemen, and yes, Bino has some astounding information one of these days when NASA hurries up and flaps their lips about what they've seen on the moon from their new satellite, the two satellites that lock together that go orbiting around, and I can't remember the name of it right now, there's just two satellites, and we found it because basically SOHO was able to catch a shot of it, locked it together, interlocked, before NASA even said it was interlocked. And yes, they'd do that because then they'd know they'd have it operating correctly and then they can announce it. So we busted that a long time ago. You've seen that out in here on Beano Black's videos. You can go back and look for it. Busted NASA and so forth. Uh, there's a, quite a few videos I did on it. So anyway, on here we're going to pop back and we're going to go to like just like 150 or something and we'll go down and there's the moon down at Palau. Antarctica, more than likely it should be the moon. Now, I really don't think I'm wrong on that. And if I'm wrong on that, then a lot of idi other idiots are going to say the crap that they think they see. Okay, so we're going to back step to 1730 in there. See, check this out. So you can almost already see it just by looking at the regular shot. You can see the dark sides, okay? But the, the, the one thing that just even started getting me, and now I'm a little more astounded that there's even more to look at, is because here, I'll plop it to 400 so you know, and you can kind of see, right? Now, like I say, by the time that that the moon, and see, the moon does because the moon moves around and orbits Earth, okay? Because it goes ahead of us when we're going through space at more than 66,000 miles an hour right now, and maybe even faster than that. And that's what we're starting to wonder about how damn fast are we accelerating to on rotation, okay, of the Earth. Because we know that on average, normally it's supposed to be 60,000 miles an hour that Earth rotates uh, and travels through space, and we rotate around the sun. And uh, or we follow the sun no matter what because the idea that factually we know that we and I'll show you on solar artists here real quick now because I'm going to blow this up. Let me blow this up to a thousand real fast so you realize that basically I'm not screwing with you at all. And because I'll be able to go back and hang on. Now remember it's the South Pole and like I say the moon tracks back and forth and follows and rotates the Earth. Okay. So you can go to NASA's deal and l load that and so forth of what the positions and so forth that it does. Now there's blowing up a thousand, so that's about the best shot you're going to get on the moon, and that's from the South Pole. Basically, it'll plop out, and you can kind of see the darkness, okay? So you can see the dark spots, so basically would more than likely, we're starting to wonder if we've got somewhat of the dark side of the moon towards Earth right now, okay? And I, that's what I somewhat, I'm not a real big moon fan, I mean, everybody's a fan of the moon, I mean, it's something to look at, right? So... We're going to plop down to 100. So basically, more than likely, that is, and we'll just back step and then step. And I think I'm going forward now. Yeah, because I backed up to get to it. And there goes the moon by. And you'll see some other objects that follow in the moon, as you can see back there. There is a, another one of our remnants that we basically know we have material out there. So hang on. Let's zoom in on that just for the heck of it since we see that that's following the moon pretty much and it could be any planet too so it ain't too getting too excited about that but let's just see what we get when we zoom in on that so you can get an idea of either something's that far out and following the moon or and you know i'm going to be able to blow that up let me go ahead and blow it up for you it doesn't really matter planet or star and i kind of knew it wasn't be too fascinating because it's still going to just look like a dot so there you go on that and like I say, you can step this, and basically that was following the moon. And we go back up, and there you go. That'll back away, and there comes the moon, and we're backing the moon up. But that followed the moon, okay? And at that arc that you see down there at the South Pole. Now, we'll go to Solar. 
and I don't lie to you very often, but anyway, we didn't go to Solaris. We're going to go to Solaris in just a second. Now, check this hold out that this is a live shot right now from Tullahoma on the Fireball Network. Now, no matter what, yes, a hole in the clouds, but wild, ladies and gentlemen, because look at the cloud cover, okay? Because this is a would normally be nighttime sky, and uh, we have the UTC time there, so I can figure that out. I ain't worried about that right now. But anyway, no matter what, if it's nighttime or whatever, check the goofy hole through the clouds, okay? Now, is that something, I mean, it's that's wild, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, you don't see clouds like a hole like that very doggone often. And we don't got an, a plane that's that damn big that's going to make that much of a big flipping hole in the uh, cloud cover over you, okay? So, basically, I got this blown up, and you had the time, and you'll even have it here as we go look at it, but pretty wild, huh? Pretty wild. So, a sun or a star, something's burning through the clouds there, Okay? Because there's cloud cover. I ain't even worried if it's nighttime shot this one. I went to the live feature, so basically this should be live. And then basically, uh, is it a deflection of some planet that is crystal up there in the space or something like that? Because that should more than likely be, I believe, the sun there at the time of this shot over there. Either that or it's one of the super giants. And the idea that it something's making it reflect and burn through the flipping clouds. Something's burning through the clouds right there. Because that is a wild shot. Because that's cloud cover looking straight up anywhere in the world. But basically it was at Tullahoma. At that fireball eyeball. Okay. And then we can go up here a little bit and we can see the other ones. Okay. And let's go look at what was more than likely in the sky at that positioning time. That would be, so basically Capella, Pateglius possibly. All this stuff here, we know Cyrus is real big, okay? So all this stuff, and then and all this stuff is grouped together pretty tight right now and big. So brightness and stuff is burning through the clouds. You can see it with your own flipping eyes. Uh, yeah, they don't like that one. So burning through the clouds. Burning through the clouds is key, bad, naughty, naughty words, ladies and gentlemen, okay? So anyway, that was the shot there. You can't miss it. I mean, it's, you just see it from a long ways off. I and mean, you just look at them like this, it's like, what the hell is that? And so I go look at it, you know, and you see that burn through the clouds. I mean, real good cloud cover, and then pfft, something's burning through. Okay, so let's go see what we got for data that came by the other night or something like that. I wasn't really worried checking on that, but we're still getting stuff. And this is nighttime sky. Okay. So, and they had a comment going by, uh, asteroid. Whatever you want to call them, you know, everybody, all these scientists and phys astrophysicists, I'd like to, I probably got better stuff than they got, but they must got some good stuff because they basically, they're in their own little, they're on their own little crystal ball, something. They got some good shit. So anyhow, uh, anyway, I'm going to just pull the data on that bugger. Yeah, so that's way out in IU wise, 9.682 IU, way the hell out, okay? But still... There it is, more than likely. And there it is again, more than likely. So, uh, pretty large because you, you think that that's, that's a hell of a long ways out. That's nine times the distance of us to the sun that's out. That bugger's out there. Let's see what the, when the, the other night there. Let's see what we got for anything more. That would be, they all pretty much, we're pretty, I think anybody's pretty much used to looking at it until we get a bigger one like that one there or something. You can see it, you know, when they streak real good. But still, the amount, as I'm scrolling down through, I mean, you're counting them. You know, we go back up. What do we got? 10 or 12 or 8, 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And there we go with uh, Asteroid 3D action again, too. You see it right there. So we got 6 or 7 of these. 6 or 7. 6 at least. So, and then you get the 3D action. Don't care what the planet, if it's the moon, the sun, or whatever. I don't even care about the time and stuff like that. But you see that liver spot that we get from either the sun or the moon or whatever and then 3d effect also there too and everything like that and so and you can see your comments comment asteroid whatever you want to call them going by more than likely they just basically you know we call it fireball watch so it should be asteroid uh falling stars because it broke apart of something somewhere so and there's a streaker there that one's got kind of longness to it so the most interesting one is pretty much the streaker let's see what we got for data on closeness on that one Wow, that's cool. Check how many IU that sucker's out. JPL, man, they can map anything out that's flying around the sky. Check that out. 3,420.292 IU out, folks. So 
distances at least almost in a quarter of distances from Earth to the Sun that bugger streaked across our sky and we were able to see it catch it up in the night sky okay that streaker down there you see that that sucker was that damn far out that's hella flipping far out okay let's check how far this one was out yep seven distances to the Sun on that one that's still a hell that's a shit load out too And here, anybody that's new, I, I put the player on, it loaded up, so here's, you're going to see the comet come across, and then JPL will put it in, in, in gun sights, pretty much. You see where it gets a shot at that material, asteroid, or whatever the hell it went by Earth? In your night sky, that's looking up at the night sky. So, and you can go look at 7.52 UTC Zulu time, which is Greenwich, uh, England, and uh, basically our nuclear armament. Uh, clock in Colorado is set to that Zulu time 752 and it's usually a day ahead of us because they're east you know when the Sun comes up the east here it's already getting ready to be evening over in England it's like eight nine hours difference or something like that eight hour flight eight nine hour flight or something so there you go with that as I play with the player and you can see that and they got it in the box they're on the right going by so I'm not even sure which distance that one was so over four and a half IU, four and a half distances of from us to the sun is where that object is at. Way the hell out. But we're getting a lot of this stuff in the nighttime sky, folks. Out of season. Normally this is in the fall that this stuff happens, okay? So we've got a lot of stuff in space going on that is not... Uh, they know, JPL would know, because all these objects are going to be like, okay, this stuff's coming here, and therefore we're positioned this way, and Earth, and Earth is in space and stuff like that. But they're not saying to go out, hey, go out and tide and watch this nighttime sky. And we know we chemtrail for a reason because that's the air conditioner. Okay. We know from Dutch Sense and HARP, we know all of that all exists, that HARP stuff and everything like that. And Dutch and everything got nosy and started figuring stuff out. Yeah. And weather modification does exist. We modify weather to grow food and keep the earth cool in certain areas so that you got food. Okay. So that the Great Plains and other areas of the world and the country get weather modifications so that all the plants and food out there that grows out in the fields doesn't burn all the crispy critters and go out. Now, there's some places in the world that don't pay for that weather modification. They don't get air conditioning. you got to buy it in order for it to get done. And there's people that are pro it and against it, and I'm not really pro. I just know that we need air conditioning. And uh, also, Mother Nature is cooling the earth because the Mother Nature is, you know, I'm just trying to show you that the idea of all this material at nighttime is flying by, okay? So, and Mother Nature's volcanoes are in earthquakes are ticking up dramatically and we've known that people have been knowing watching it for more than a year and now uh Kerasoft or something on the internet is focusing in on stomping that out of being widely known about too much stuff i have a uh, uh, li live earthquake isn't really uploading for me today i don't know what's up on that so all this stuff's out there and basically weather modification is somewhat good because i do at least it cools it down and then also to you know we know about ads and cpu so just remember that that was very unique shots of the moon because I, that's what it should have looked like, okay? And basically the sun has quite, I'm just going through the pictures real fast, but there's what you got for uh, your coronal, or oral, okay? So we're kind of twisting again still, cause, but then the south pole's coming back a little bit, but the north pole's going off a, a little bit. Okay, so we're doing a nice twist through, like a bullet through space. And what was interesting is they don't show the CME that I showed you earlier this week, or, you know, earlier this week or over the weekend. Monday, Tuesday, whatever the heck I made that one. So don't really see a CME that we showed, that they showed on here on this map. It's not on there right now. So it's going to hit them on the 6th or the 7th. So beware of electrical downing on the 6th and the 7th. And the idea that the sun has calmed down, and we'll see the telemetry here in a minute, but it does is getting that electrical static or marble roll marks. Okay, and I think I can even go up to the shots up here. We'll see what we get. I haven't even looked yet, but see, it's still getting those marble roll or electrical static marks, okay, i.e. I right there too, okay, so you can't miss it, it's right there, you see, so in Brazil, Chile, and Mexico, I'd be very careful about an earthquake today, down there, and 
like I say, earthquake ain't loading for me. And then, uh, like I say, the sun seems to be kind of calm right now. It's got its heartbeat going pretty good. But look at the Clemmer Day.